We'd all like some quick and simple ways to improve our health, but we're bombarded with often conflicting advice. So, if you were going to do just one thing to improve your mental and physical well-being, what should it be? Maybe a few squats to enhance your brain, or more bacteria to improve your mood, or even a cold shower to boost your immune system. I'm Dr. Michael Mosley, and this is Just One Thing. Where each episode we'll explore one thing you can start doing tomorrow to improve your health or life in ways you might not expect. I'm standing in our local wood at the moment, just listening to the bird song and picking the sound of the wood, and also the smells and the green leaves that are all around me. After a year being largely trapped indoors by COVID, I really have come to appreciate the joy of being outside in these lovely green spaces. And there are certainly a whole host of reasons to get outside, but there seems to be something particularly beneficial about being somewhere green. Research has shown that being outside in nature can reduce stress, and there is also evidence that more time spent in a green environment is beneficial for your heart and your immune system. Early in the series, I talked about the benefits of going out for a brisk early morning walk. But this episode of Just One Thing isn't really about exercise. In fact, I'm not moving at all. I'm just standing here in the wood, really soaking it all in. It's about the benefits of spending more time outside in nature. Where I am at the moment, I am surrounded by beech trees. And every so often, I see a kite fly by. And it really is very magical. Being surrounded by nature not only makes us feel good in a moment, but also might have a more lasting effect on our stress levels and our mental health. So how can you enhance the power of the green spaces to bring you the greatest benefits? Hi, my name is Piet. I'm 48 and I live in Barry in the Vale of the Morgan in Wales. I found that my activity has is, is decreased and, and gone very static in a way, and that the walks I can afford to fit in the time that I have a more urban walk so my plan is to kind of reconnect with nature and um, go for a longer walk. So how are we going to encourage Pierre to appreciate green spaces? Well we've asked him to really fill his senses, to stop and touch the trees, look up at the canopy, smell the flowers and listen to the bird song. Although most people enjoy a stroll in the woods, the Japanese seem to be particularly keen. There is an ancient tradition in Japan of forest bathing, also known as having a forest shower. The idea is that when you go into the forest, you try to connect through your senses. You stop. You listen. You inhale. Doing this produces measurable benefits. Studies have shown, for example, that spending time in a forest can boost an important component of the immune system, called natural killer cells. Even a few hours seems to have an impact. I'm going to be asking a leading expert later about this and what might be going on. As well as the smell, part of the joy of going and spending time in green spaces is the impact that sounds like birdsong or a babbling brook can have on our brains. If you take the time to pause and listen, then you will find this shifts your focus outward, making you more engaged in the world around you, and less in your own thoughts. Less introspection can, in turn, reduce anxiety. A couple of years ago, I did a small experiment with researchers from the University of Edinburgh. We asked volunteers to spend an extra couple of hours a week outdoors, somewhere green. After just three weeks, we saw big improvements in levels of the stress hormone cortisol, as well as a 30% drop in their perceived stress. The fact our experiment was carried out in Scotland in the middle of winter didn't seem to dull their enthusiasm. One guy told me he sat on a park bench during a hailstorm and still found it surprisingly soothing. The evidence for the benefits of spending time in nature are now so compelling that doctors in some parts of Scotland actively prescribe it to their patients. 
So is Pierre benefiting from time spent in the great outdoors? So this is day four. I'm out in uh, Port Kerry Park in Barry. As you can hear around me, there's a lot of birds. You can hear uh, the river flowing. I really enjoy sort of building up gradually. It's also given me that goal that I can do this and enjoy it and reconnect with nature. I've been really curious, kind of looking at the birds, what they're doing at the moment, um, trying to recognise the birds as well, trying to recognise the, the different noises they're making. Uh, so yeah, all in all, it's been really great. So we've got Pierre spending time appreciating nature, but what is it doing for him? Professor Ming Kuo is director of the University of Illinois Landscape and Human Health Laboratory. Could you explain to me how spending time in a green park could do something like affect your immune system? Yeah, so I think there are two main effects on the immune system. We can simply think of it as calming what needs calming and also strengthening what needs strengthening. So uh, on the calming side, we have a system of inflammatory cytokines, which are sort of the alarm bells for the body. And when they are overexcitable, they, <laughs> they kind of freak out uh, when something happens that they, they think is a bad thing. And then the body mounts a giant defense, and we can actually die from that. It's called the cytokine storm. So we want to have our alarm bells tuned so that we're not freaking out at, at the slightest item uh, or foreign invader. And then we also want to have our fighting apparatus actually tuned up and strengthened to go. So, for example, a three-day weekend in nature has huge and lasting impacts on our virus fighting apparatus. It improves our the number of our natural killer cells as well as their activity. And even a month later, you can see there'll be 24% above baseline before you started. So we see these really large effects for three-day weekends, but we also see smaller and persistent effects for smaller doses. How long do you have to spend in nature to see an impact? Oh, that's a good question. The effects of nature are amazingly quick. So if you put people in an MRI and then you show them pictures of nature, they don't have to be in nature, you can see changes within five minutes. So every bit seems to help. Does it matter whether you're in a park, in a wood, up a mountain? Yes and no. In terms of you'll get different benefits in different settings, but you'll get benefits in, in all of those settings. And in, that includes uh, tree-lined neighborhood streets, for example. What you need to be is near natural elements. So, for example, um, green views, as I said, are helpful. If you're near soil or on soil, uh, there are helpful microbes called my Mycobacterium vaccae, which actually change our serotonin profiles, and they block stress and inflammation. In mountainous areas, as you mentioned, in forests, you will find, a, oh, and places with moving water, you'll find more negative air ions. And negative air ions have a whole variety of effects. Uh, and phytoncides, which are, well, phyto is plant and side is killing. So they are plant-released substances which kill microbes. So when I go into the wood and there's a wood near me and I go there, uh, most days I'm inhaling um, the lovely smells, but I'm also getting a good old blast of uh, phytoncides. Is that right? The lovely smells probably are the phytoncides. The smell of pine, cypress, lavender, cedar, those are all... You know, when we when we hear those names, we can often call up the scents. Uh, those are the fighting sides. Ah, and I know you're doing research on the impact on uh, going for a walk on children um, and their concentration. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, well, so we've done some work with uh, kids with ADHD where we took them on forced hikes, 20-minute uh, walks where they walked with a an experimenter, and then when they got back indoors, they would um, take tests of concentration and w with someone who didn't know which walk they had just been on. And what we find is that they just concentrate much better after the park walk than after the downtown walk. Not only are they better, but the difference is roughly the same size as the difference you see on that same test between kids who don't have ADHD and kids who do have ADHD. So there's a sense in which you can say, that that park walk briefly seems to have erased their ADHD. 
So there is evidence that spending time in green spaces can have a positive impact on your mental health as well, is it? There's a whole cluster of evidence in this area. So we have not only people's reports that the visits to nature are helpful, but also let's say you imagine a one kilometer radius around your house. If it's greener in that circle, then what we'll find is you are going to have a lower rate of depression or anxiety disorder and fewer prescriptions for depression and anxiety. Um, we also see that if we take people into the lab and we spritz them with negative air ions, that systematically reduces depressive symptoms, both for chronic depression uh, sufferers and also seasonal affective disorder sufferers. Can you tell me about the research you've done showing the way that green spaces may help protect you against COVID? What we're finding is that the greener regions of Italy have lower rates of COVID. We've found that in the U.S. But we also have pretty good ideas of why nature might do this. So as I mentioned earlier, when you go out to nature, it boosts your natural killer cells. And that means the natural killer cells, their job in the body is to fight viruses. And COVID is a virus. So that's one helpful thing. And then the other helpful thing is that by reducing your inflammatory cytokines, if you have a lower level of inflammation to sort of on an ambient level in your body, then you are much less likely to experience a cytokine storm if you get COVID. It's sort of like your <laughs> nature is keeping you further from death on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you very much. I'm itching to go out into the wood. <laughs> That's great. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. So it seems there are lots of possible ways that being in nature could benefit our health. It is a fascinating area of study. And while some of the early evidence is promising, more research is needed to help us better understand why enjoying natural environments can be so beneficial. Let's check in a final time with Pierre to find out if he's feeling any of the benefits. This is uh, day seven of um, my longer walks. I'm really enjoying the reconnection with nature. I feel really mindful of the environment. I've been more, much more efficient in work as well because of that. Um, so I've got a focus now. Um, so I've really enjoyed, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed um, doing these longer walks. So here I am back in the wood, my favourite spot, listening to the birds. And it really is very simple. You just have to spend an extra two hours a week, that's around 20 minutes a day, being in a wood, being somewhere green, listening to nature, taking in the sounds, taking in the smells, and ideally not just chatting to someone else, but really appreciating where you are. And if you do that, the evidence is pretty clear. It will help reduce stress levels and boost your immune system and really give you a very precious moment during the week. And that's why I think this really is just one thing you should find time to do. So that's it. It's just one thing you can incorporate into your daily routine, which really could benefit your body and life. If you want to hear more of the series, then why not subscribe?